What's going on guys? Vic VB back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I'm not going to only show you how to enable nudge. We're going to adjust the sensitivity. This way also tilt works on your virtual pinball machine. Let's do it. All right guys, you know the drill if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. For anybody that is new here, there's a very convenient link down below for Linktree. It'll show you everything and send you everywhere from TikTok to YouTube to Instagram. Be sure to check out all my live streams. You can always see what I'm doing as I build arcades and virtual pinball machines. What are you waiting for? Be sure to go follow and then also be sure to like, subscribe, and do a little comment on this video and let me know if this tutorial helped you out at all. <laughs> now, if you're looking to build a virtual pinball machine or if you have a virtual pinball machine, you wanna make things bigger, we all know that these V-pins, we're trying to make them as close as possible to the real thing. Going from analog plungers to beacons to strobes to shaker motors, solenoids, everything to make it as real as possible. Now, you could have all these toys. But in all honesty, the main important thing to have on a V-pin is the accelerometer, which mimics nudge. Without that feature, you're not gonna have a good time. Now, don't get me wrong, you could assign magnet saves to a button, which then will nudge left and right. Me now owning two real Jersey Jack pinball machines, pressing a button to nudge is not the real thing. You really wanna get in there and you really want to move your body around and actually move the cabinet. And with that, you do need an accelerometer. And I will now do the tutorial on how to adjust the sensitivity and set nudge so you could truly enjoy your virtual pinball machine. Now, real quick, let me give you a visual representation of what exactly nudge is. What are we doing? As you can see, I have the ball cradle, but as I nudge the table, you could see that the ball reacts again. No buttons being pushed. I am actually moving the table. And what's also great with an accelerometer, if I actually push up, you could actually see the ball goes up. If I go to the right, the ball goes to the right and the left as it should. So again, just doing a quick little gameplay thing. It really does help, especially when you see the ball going straight down the middle. It will be a good way and a great, really true way to experience virtual pinball. So again, the main thing, number one, that you need to accomplish this, you will need an accelerometer. What is that, Vic? In all honesty, for me personally, when it comes to my build, I always use the KL25Z encoder board. That I'm able to wire up my buttons. I could also wire up my analog plunger, as you can see on the screen there. And it does have an accelerometer built in for that nudge. Now again, to start off, step one, you do need an accelerometer. These regular SJS JX encoders are regular kind of simple encoders you get on Amazon, will not have an accelerometer built in. I'm a big fan of the KL25Z, like I just said. I'm able to map my buttons to it. I'm able to put my analog plunger to it, and it does have the accelerometer built in. Cleveland Design is new, they're upcoming. A lot of people are using that company. I actually am making a V-pin that a customer sent me that has Cleveland Design. He does have a pin one board in it. I haven't gone yet to the extent of testing. I don't totally know what Cleveland Design offers as far as which one has an accelerometer. So before you pull the trigger on one of his stuff, be sure to ask which one has an accelerometer. So step one, make sure you have an accelerometer. Because if you don't, you're gonna have to just stick with your button nudges. All right, now keep in mind, this tutorial is really geared towards VPX. As far as like the other ones, like Future Pinball, I personally don't enjoy Future Pinball, except for Terry Red, awesome stuff that he's doing. I rarely play those. FX2, FX3, I actually made a tutorial a while back on how to enable like X360 CE. In all brutal honesty, in that, I don't even want to call it an emulator because it's a separate PC game. It's almost the same kind of setup where you're pushing a button to nudge. Even though you could set up the accelerometer, but it, because it's like a, an Xbox controller, it just makes it like a nudge. So this right here, again, we are aiming towards VPX. Now, me personally, I do have 10.7 and 10.8. Shout out to Rudy, he has a great upgrade tutorial. As you can see on my desktop, I do have the 10.7 and I have the 10.8, which is the X64. In all honesty, you should set these up for each emulator, so 10.7 and 10.8, but right now we're gonna focus on 10.8. As you can see, I double click 
and we have VPX loaded. I don't recommend loading a table just yet. Do what I just did there. Main thing we're gonna go is we're gonna go to preferences. We have to go to configure keys, nudge, and doff. Now here you're gonna see at the bottom right here where my mouse is, there's an option to enable nudge filter, which I always put on. We have to enable analog nudge, and we also have to enable the tilt. Now it's crazy that many people don't read this line right here. It does say there, to set, calibrate, and test the nudge, please load the nudge test calibration, which we will do. This is also a big thing that everything is not copy and paste. Some people also, depending on where you put your accelerometer, my first ever build, I had the accelerometer in the rear of the cabinet. That was a big mistake. These now, all my builds, they're in the front of the cabinet. This way, it's a much better reaction to it. Now, before we go and press OK, we're going to do something. Well, actually, we have to press OK. We're actually going to do one more step. We're actually going to go to the video graphic option. This is now going into the tilt side of things. On the video graphic option, there's a thing here for visual nudge strength. I'm going to just put this to a point 0.2. I'm going to add the number 2. And then we have point two save changes. You're going to understand why I did that in a second. Now, like it said there before, we have to go and open up the nudge table, which is nudge test and calibration. Again, many people don't see that option. Once you load it, press the play or you could press F5 and the table will launch. This now, like I said, this is what's great. This isn't copy and paste stuff your numbers might be different and vary. So now I'm gonna make sure you can definitely probably still see me, that's a-okay. Using your Magnus saves, you can see at the top of the screen, options change, but we're gonna focus on, right now, nudge, X and Y. As you can see, I have mine, I think it's defaulted to 100, it's 100. You can nudge your table. If you see that it's going, you know, it's too easy to nudge, you don't like that it's that, if it's too easy, you're going to want to lower this. So I'm actually going to right now lower these all to zero. It actually goes to negative, but we're going to put this to zero. I'm going to put my X and my Y just to kind of show you, you know, what happens when you change everything. So if I set these both right now to zero, I'm right now shaking this table and nothing is happening. We have zero sensitivity. So now as you go along, me personally, I would leave it at 100. On uh, my personal pinball machine downstairs, I actually have it set to 150. So real quick to show you, we have the Y. So you can even see that red dot there, it's going up and down. But if I move left and right, it's not going left and right. That is because the X max is at zero. I'm going to bring this back to 100. Again, you could play along with it. If you see that it's too, you know, if you're tapping the machine and the ball is flying, you're obviously going to want to lower the sensitivity. So. Again, it's something that is personal preference. You're gonna have to just play around with it and such. 100's pretty good, especially if you have your accelerometer in the front of the cabinet like I do. Basically right now, nudge is set. Now let's look into tilt. Tilt is different from nudge. Keep in mind, nudging is where you know we're actually moving the ball around, but tilt, this right now is mimicking a virtual tilt bob. Basically, once that tilt bob hits the metal circle, it'll give you a danger and then it will eventually tilt out. There is an option there for tilt sensitivity. Now, this is why we did visual tilt. You'd be surprised. You right now are gonna shake this machine. Nothing is happening. How can I tell if my tilt is activated? That's why we did the virtual visual nudge in the video setting. You'll be surprised. I believe on my personal machine downstairs, I have this thing set to about 780. Yes, you have to go on up. Let's go up right now to, uh, we'll go to 750 just to be safe. I'm actually gonna go to 700, let's go to 700. And basically now, as you can see, there's no visual shake. I have to bump up the sensitivity even more. Essentially, when you feel like you've shaked that right there, I activated that tilt. You saw the table, that right there, that virtual shake, that is tilt. That means that you are now dangering and tilting so now you could kind of adjust it to you know how you think do you feel like you're shaking the machine too much if you are shaking the machine too much and it should have dangered you should then bump up your sensitivity if you feel like you tapped the machine and it shook then you're going to want to lower the sensitivity so just for an example we don't want to go to dead zone and change that by accident we're going to bring the sensitivity up to let's just say like a thousand and yes as far as the kl25z board that right there, you see that? Like I just did a very little nudge and it's shaking. It is too high. Again, this all, it's not about numbers. What number do you have, Vic? 
This is all personal preference. So you just got to keep that in mind. Let's go to 850. That's not too bad, honestly. This is pretty good. Now I'm going to go up a little bit more because I feel like I'm really moving the machine. It should have activated the danger. So 870. I can live with that. Maybe just a little bit lower. I'll go to 860. A little bit higher. That's my sweet spot right there. 865. So again, many people don't know you have to run the nudge tilt calibration. That is it. You now have your nudge and your tilt set. Now you simply exit out of the table. For me, it's double press on the queue and you'll be back to the desktop. If we real quickly go to preferences, configure keys, nudge and doff, you can see there your tilt sensitivity number adjusted. Again, that's because of the nudge tilt table. Now, if you remember, we still have the visual nudge uh, on. Real quick though, I highly recommend that you actually go ahead and launch a table. So for me right now, I'm gonna actually launch Big Buck Hunter. I always say launch a table and then actually give it a test. So without further ado, I'm going to move you over. Maybe you can still see me and we will real quick play this table. You could also run a table like South Park because those have toys in the play field and they actually will move as you nudge. So even right now with the ball in the trough in the shooter lane, you can see there I'm shaking the table and I'm good. Now, essentially though, if I actually shake enough you can see there i hit a danger which is great and then basically i mean really i should be playing but you can see my visual is still there so i can see it and then i tilted so this is great you should launch a table you can still see that visual tilt if you see that you're shaking the table too hard then you have to up your sensitivity so just go back into the nudge calibration and then up the sensitivity but as you can see we are able to enjoy some actual nudging. If I could actually capture the ball, that'd be great. And we could show off some of the nudge if my keyboard's not in the way. And there you go, cradled up. And now we have the nudge correctly. So me going up and down, you can see the ball reacts. Awesome, we are set and good to go. Now I'm gonna double press my Q. Like I said before, I could press Q twice. We are back to our home screen. I'm gonna go ahead, go to preferences, and I will go to back to video options and i'm going to put this from 0.2 to just 0 0.0 and then save the changes again if you see that you still need to adjust it just go right back in and adjust your nudge test calibration uh for me it's fine maybe for a customer they need it a little bit more sensitive you know you could always go ahead and do that so again you're going to want to touch your tilt sensitivity i'm going to probably bump it up to 870 and there you go again double press the q and you are good to go. You have now nudge and tilt configured on VPX. Now keep in mind, we've been doing this for 10.8. We have to do the same process again for 10.7 because from my understanding, the settings do not transfer over. So real quick, again, I'm still on 10.8 here. My tilt sensitivity is 870. You're gonna take it from your machine there. We're gonna exit out of 10.8 and then we're gonna launch 10.7. Don't actually launch a table. If I go to preferences, configure keys, there you go. You can see there that my tilt sensitivity is not set. I'm gonna set this to 870, but I'm still going to launch the nudge tilt table and do the same process again. You're better off being safe than sorry. So again, I'm gonna go to video options. Over here, you can see the visual nudge. I'm gonna set that to 0.2. We're gonna press okay. And we're gonna load up the nudge test, the test, nudge test. Now, as far as this, you're gonna see, you're gonna have to pop it there that this table's for 10.8. That is A-OK, -okay. you could still launch this table. And again, you're gonna do the same process that we just did. I don't believe the X and the Y gain transfers over. So first thing, make sure your X and Y, you know, again, I highly recommend that you actually go ahead and actually nudge and make sure that you like it and it's to your liking and such. And again, you have your tilt sensitivity. Now for me, I feel like I have to bump this up a little bit. There's the visual there. Again, it's a virtual tilt bob, so it's technically, you know, moving, but this is, this is, I'm nudging way too much. I'm going to bump this up to maybe 875. There you go. I'll probably, yeah, I'm actually good at 875 for this. So again, you want to actually, see, I should actually bump it up a little bit more. Let's go to 880. Again, I, I'm, I'm, I, I play pinball, so, you know, for me to nudge it that hard, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right at 880. Again, long story short, you're gonna wanna do it according to you. And again, for 10.7,
do that process, test the nudge. Maybe 10.8, the emulation is a little bit different and all that. Just do yourself a favor and test the nudge. As you can see, double press the Q out. I'm gonna go back to preferences. You can see there my tilt sensitivity is at 880. That's perfectly fine. We're gonna to go to video graphic option. And again, we're gonna set the visual nudge to zero. That is it. You now have nudge and tilt calibrated on your virtual pinball machine. Now real quick, just for shits and giggles, some people might say, Vic, what are you using? I use the Pinscape tool. Uh, if I go to Pinscape tool, you can see here the joystick, there's your accelerometer right there. So you can visually see that cross moving and such. So as far as what software I have in the background, Pinscape, and I do have my encoders set up as keyboard. I don't use it as a joystick, I have it set up to keyboard. So there you go, you're pretty cool to see the accelerometer, everything stock. I don't go to Windows and I don't do the calibration in Windows like their game controllers. I do everything inside the Pinscape software. Now, one last tip of advice to talk about, if you have a shaker motor, that could slightly affect your nudge and tilt, but in all honesty, on real machines, it does affect the ball roll. Really though, you have to be careful when it comes to the actual tilt sensitivity. Now. For me personally, my KL25Zs on my build and all my customer builds, I actually mount the board on a anti-vibration plate that you've seen on drones. I'll show a picture right here. Highly recommend that you do that. If you have the board bolted down to the same piece of wood that your shaker motor is in, you will possibly, I would say you will have a bad time. This is where different encoders and all that. Like I said, the pin one board, I haven't experienced it. It's right there behind you, but I haven't gone to the extent of actually wiring it up just yet. That build is still in progress and all that. Just little stuff to think about when you are building your virtual pinball machine. But there you guys have it. A very nice, I hope it was a nice tutorial on how not to just enable nudge, but you actually have to go ahead and set the sensitivity and do a little bit of work to get it really dialed in. Vic VP, Game Case Arcade, stay tuned. This build right here is at 98% complete. I'm just waiting on glass. And then we'll have some promo videos and all that of the machine, Bride of Pinbot.